Hey guys, welcome to HVAC Tool Review. This is episode number one. I um, wanted to make this channel, there's not a whole lot on YouTube for the HVAC guy looking for tools, so I wanted to I wanted to put this stuff out there for anyone that's maybe new to the trade, looking to get into it, or uh, maybe you've been in for a while looking to change out some tools, you're not happy with what you're using. Um, I've been doing this for about 10 years now and been able to experience a lot of different tools. Uh, I work with a large mechanical contractor. I actually have a tool testing team, um, which I've been part of. So we're able to go through and get our hands on a whole bunch of different stuff um, to see what works best for, for us. So just wanted to share some of that knowledge. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know if there's something you'd like to see reviewed in the future. Might be able to get, get that in here. Um, yeah, just shoot a comment down below. Um, like, subscribe, there's gonna be plenty more to come. So let me know what you guys think and let me know what you guys wanna see more of. So anyways, this video today is to cover seven items that I think every HVAC tech should, should carry on them. I know when I first got into the trade, uh, I had no idea what, what I needed, what I should be doing. I remember going through the stores, looking at all the tools, everything looked awesome. I had no idea what was good, what was bad, what I really even needed to do my job. So luckily the lead, that I got set up with, was able to help me out quite a bit in that aspect, so kind of wanted to share some of that knowledge with, with some of you guys. It's kind of like when you are rearranging your van, you end up doing that a whole bunch of times when you're trying to figure out exactly how you like it set up. So uh, these are just some tools that I think that everyone can benefit from having on them. So number one on the list is a notepad. So I remember the first day I started, that was one of the first things that, uh, one of the old timers told me that I was working with. He said, every good tech has a notepad and kept that with me over the last 10 plus years being in the trade. Um, I like to carry these right in the rain. I don't know if that's showing up right for you. Right in the rain notepads. They kind of work everywhere. The paper doesn't get soggy and, and lose its, lose the ink. So, I mean, yeah, these come in, in handy for everything. I mean, if you're, we've all been there where you're, you're rolling down the road, you get a call from dispatch or coordination or, or whoever sends you your service calls and they're trying to send you a name, address, contact information. So it's nice to be able to just know where your notepad is, um, pull it out of your pocket, take that call real quick, jot down the, the info that you need to be able to, to get to where you're going. Or if you're up on a rooftop and you need to, uh, it's nice to be able to take down some parts information, whether that be for some future quotes on that equipment or just, just reminding you of what you need to get done while you're up there or on your next return visit, something like that. So a notepad always comes in handy. I'm sure the possibilities are endless. And I think a lot of guys already carry one of these. Uh, number two on the list, something to write with. So I mean, you got your notepad, but you're gonna need something to be able to fill that out with. Um, like I said, these, I love these right in the reins. You can tell here, like even with a Sharpie, So as you can see there, just wrote this on this sheet. <clears throat> but got some water here, you can dunk that in. And we'll let that sit there for a bit, mm -hmm. see what happens. So yeah, you need something to write with on your notepad. It doesn't matter, you don't have to get a write in the rain notepad. That's just my personal preference. Um, a lot of guys like them. So if that's something you wanna look into, there'll be a link down in the description. As you can see, this is still good. Ink's still on there. Doesn't smear off. So, Sharpies don't bleed through the backside, which is nice. So, they make right in the rain pens. I do like those as well. I forgot to grab one in for this video. But if you don't have one, uh, the sharp, I found that the Sharpie, the ink will stay on the pad. But if you use a regular like ballpoint pen in the water, that'll wipe off. But the Sharpie seems to stay. So, just something to know. Uh, number three on my list is the pocket thermometer. So this is my brand of choice. This is called the Cooper Atkins. Um, you can look these up on, on Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description for all this stuff. So at the end of the video, if there's anything you want to check out, um, check it out down there. So this is the Cooper Atkins. They're, they're fairly cheap and 
might look like just a regular barbecue thermometer, which it kind of is, but I've found that these things be super accurate. They're durable. I mean, they're out in the rain. Um, I find that they, they just keep on rocking. So uh, you can replace the battery here. And if you're in need of a nice little pocket thermometer, you should definitely check these out. They make, they, there are dedicated HVAC pocket thermometers that have a, a magnet. For the price, you can't beat these. So go ahead and check them out. Uh, number four is a 10 in one, 11 in one, eight in one, whatever kind of screwdriver package you want to use. My personal preference is to use the Klein. As you can see, it is 11 tools in one. You've got two bits here, two bits here on this end, your 5 16 nut driver. Or no, this is quarter inch nut driver. Your 5 16 nut driver. And on the other side, you've got your square head, a larger square head on the other side another quarter and a three eighths. So with all this in one little in one little package is kind of a must have, I think for any tech. I mean, this covers the majority of most equipment um, panels that you're gonna be able to need to get off. I mean, most of the equipment manufacturers seem like they're five sixteenths sheet metal screws holding, holding the panels on. Uh, some of the larger equipment like Intellipack, stuff like that, those are all three eighths. So this covers you. I mean, it's obviously it's nicer to have a drill um, to get all those three eighths off on some of the larger units. But if you get yourself in a pinch, you could always throw one of these. Um, I've used this thing in my drill and used this as a drill bit when I didn't have one on hand. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, it's a pretty versatile tool. These bits, you can replace them. A lot of times I'll replace these out with um, a Schrader core removal tool and these smaller flathead for like, in, like thermostat connections, stuff like that. So pretty customizable and I would recommend that every tech has one of these in their pocket. That brings us to number five is a good knife. So there's a couple knives out there that I'd recommend. Uh, what I really carry all the time is my SOG. I like that it's a little spring assisted. This thing I've been carrying on me for probably the past four or five years and this thing is extremely sharp, holds a blade really well. Um, and they're not terribly expensive. So I'll throw a link down in the description for this one as well. There's some other cheaper options like the Gerber and, and the Milwaukee's and, and big name tool manufacturers make some cheap ones. The, I mean, it's nice that they lock and stuff like that. The blades don't hold up to anything, but if, if you don't want to be using your nice blade out there in the field, then, then these might be a good throwaway option if that's something you'd rather, rather use. But everyone needs a knife, whether you're just trying to open up filter boxes, open up parts packages, stuff like that. You don't want to be the guy that looks like an idiot out there struggling, trying to not being able to get past the tape that's holding the box closed. So just throw a knife in your pack or in your pocket. Um, if you're not a knife guy, some guys are, are Leatherman multi-tool guys. So that's something to check out as well. Uh, some of them are really nice that I've seen that guys carry. But either way, every tech is going to need some kind of blade. And number seven. Number seven is a good light. So I've used a, f a wide variety of lights over the years. Um, and this has been my favorite, this little Milwaukee pen light. The reason I like this light is it's super small, fits in my pocket. It's got the clip. Um, it uses, I, think, I believe it just uses two AA batteries. Can't remember if they're AA or AAA. Two AAA batteries. So it's nice to have batteries that are readily available. Um, if you use some of the more specialty lights, I've had a lot of good luck with the, with the Phoenix Tacticals, the Surefires and stuff like that. Those lights are really expensive and it sucks when you lose one, um, first of all. And number two, it's, it's kind of a pain to have a rechargeable light and your battery dies or it's, and most of these LEDs, when the battery's getting low, it doesn't just start dimming it. It is just going along and then it's just dead. So, um, then having to recharge it, not having any way just to swap out the batteries with a really common AAA that you most likely have on your truck stocked anyway. Um, that's that's the huge benefit of this light. The next major benefit is this end here. I don't know if you can tell, is soft. So I know we've all done it, throwing a flashlight in your mouth when you need both hands. So they designed this with that in mind to be able to hold that with your teeth and not be chipping your teeth. Whereas like this little SOG light that I've used, um, this thing, ends up chewing up your teeth if you're holding that, trying to hold that in there. 
but like I said, some other lights I've used, the Phoenix Tacticals are really nice. Some of those are rechargeable, some of them, so they have a few little pen lights that are um, able to just take double A, a single double A or single triple A. Um, the really nice thing about the Milwaukee light is it's not overly bright. So I'm sure you guys have all experienced it when you're up in an attic or up above a drop ceiling, wherever you're at, shining your light, you end up shining a super bright light against some ductwork and, and then ends up blinding you and messes up your night vision. So this is just bright enough to be able to get the job done. It doesn't have any other brightness settings, but I found that it's pretty much perfect. Uh, if you're looking for something else that can change brightness settings, like this little SOG does it, multi-taps on the back. It's more like a tactical light, but some of the Phoenix lights have adjustable light um, brightness settings up on the front there. So if that's something you want to check out, then by all means, check them out. Finally here, we have got smartphone. It's almost a necessity with being able to look up the countless information that we have access to. I mean, that's 90% of this job is being able to figure out I mean, no, you're never gonna, you're never gonna know anything in this trade. So when you're going out there, you need to be able to figure out how to locate the information that you're looking for in order to do your job. And a smartphone is a big part of that. I mean, you can get a hold of, of tech support. You can look up installation manuals, service manuals, um, service bulletins, you can get all that information from your phone. You can store those if you'd like in your, in, in something like iBooks or some kind of PDF document and keep all those on hand for when you don't have access to cell service. Um, there's a lot of apps out there that tools require the use of a smartphone. So I think we're, we're to the point that everyone's gonna need a smartphone or some kind of device. We're already getting there with a lot of equipment it requires a laptop to, to uh, work on effectively. So I think everyone should be carrying a smartphone. The, the tools that are, that are here are pretty much invaluable. And then one kind of bonus that we've got here is, um, I just picked these up and I've been super happy with them. These are, these are some AirPod knockoff headphones and, and I've been really happy with this thing. As you can see, they come in a nice little case uh, held in there with some magnets. This case charges them. Uh, they fit in there real nice. You can see you put them in, just sucks them right down in there. So I get about four to five hours of listening time off these earbuds, which is nice when you're just rolling through on a maintenance on a roof or a long repair that's kind of mindless, just going at it. It's nice to have some podcasts or, or your favorite music going on just to help pass the time. But I've been pretty happy with these things. I didn't, I've, I've had a pair of AirPods in the past and I ended up losing one of the earbuds. So expensive set out again. But yeah, I found these on Amazon. They're really cheap and yeah, four to five hours on a single charge, and then this case actually charges them again up to another five times. So, can't beat that for the price that they are on there. So like I said guys, all this stuff will be linked down in the description. If you wanna check any of it out, feel free. Appreciate you guys checking out the channel. Um, if you could leave a like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you guys would like to see. Um, I'd really appreciate that. So yeah, thanks for checking it out. and. Like I mentioned, all this stuff is gonna be linked down in the description. All of this stuff will be in an Amazon affiliate link. So if you end up purchasing something from there, I'll get a small commission off of it. Um, if you don't want that to happen, then feel free to search it in a different, in a different platform.